Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Something else that you who have done so much might do for us. Let's give you time for it. Keep telling us back home what war is really like. For a few of us don't quite understand. Aren't doing all we really could. And if you find a Frenchman or an Englishman or an Aussie who fights beside you a decent sort of chap, you might mention that too when you write home. We, all of us together, not only have to win the world this time, we have to live in it afterwards. We have to get to know the neighbors better. And you can help our understanding. That will help us to help you. To an entire generation of Americans, most of them now in uniform, the name Benny Goodman the signified absolute monarchy in the realm of music for dancing. This week, the King of Swing is playing at the Hotel New Yorker. We take you there for Benny and Clarinet Ella King.
For a magazine edited for the troops instead of a radio broadcast built for Joe Doughboy and his folks back home, I guess uh, pictures of pretty girls would be very much a part of the publication. We bow to this immutable law of nature in our own limited fashion by presenting each week one certified glamour girl suitable for framing in anyone's regimental loudspeaker. Our girl of the week is Miss Janet Blair, now sitting prettily in Hollywood. With hardly any noticeable difficulty, we've persuaded Frank McHugh to discuss things and stuff with Janet. Mr. McHugh takes over. Thank you, Mr. Fatterman. You know the things. I've got the stuff. <laughs> Janet, did you have a nice Christmas? Oh, wonderful, Frank. Santa Claus was certainly nice to me. That man came on like the commandos right on the beam. He jammed a solid pile of my nylons and trucked on out with his boost lace high. And really in the groove, Frank. Yes, yeah, I've heard that. That man can really swing it for a fat man. <laughs> you sound a little set yourself, Frank. How did you do this Christmas? Well, Janet, I don't care about receiving gifts, Janet. Really, I don't. My great pleasure is in picking out just the right thing for the right person. Oh. Now, for instance, I found the curious little cocktail set for some newlywed friends of mine. Really? Uh, what was it like? Well, it's just a small shaker, but two glasses. Uh -huh. And on one of the glasses it says his, and on the other glass it says hers. Uh-huh. What's it say on the shaker? Hotel Biltmore. Oh. <laughs> Say, Frank, presents like that are hard to pick up nowadays. Oh, yes, they are. You know, house detectives are getting awfully careful. But there, there's one thing, Janet, there's one thing that worries me. What's that? I haven't sent my sister a gift yet. She's well, at back east. Oh, really? Oh, well, if you hurry, I uh, I bet you could get it there in time for Easter. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Though? Honestly, I didn't have the slightest idea what she needed. Well, didn't she give you some little hint in the letter or somewhere? Oh, no, no. I read her last letter very carefully. I didn't find a single hint. Oh, you're either extremely hard to hint to, or your sister's a remarkable sister. What does her last letter say? Oh, oh, so you think I can't take a hint, huh? <laughs> well, I'll read you the letter. Show you. Not a hint in it. Now, here it is. She starts off. Dear Frank, I hope that uh, I'm her favorite brother, and she always says that, dear Frank. <laughs> uh, dear Frank. I hope you are nice and warm there in California. It is cold in the east. Lots of snow and real fur coat weather. <laughs> no hint so far. <laughs> Not even new. It's always fur coat weather back in December. Sure, sure. And she goes on to say, quote, Of course, the animals here in the east don't have to worry about the fuel oil rationing this winter as they have nice warm fur to keep them warm. No hint yet, unless, uh, say, do you think she wants a pet animal? Maybe. 
Do you think she'd like a little skunk? Well, <laughs> you said yourself that you're her favorite brother. <laughs> well, I guess she doesn't want a pet animal. She lives in an apartment. The fur would get all over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm not even warm. And neither is your sister. <laughs> is there any more to the letter? Yes, yes. She says, uh, we don't go out much these days because of mileage rationing. And uh, it is, as the farmers say, a fur piece to town. <laughs> She's a funny kid. Yeah, funny yeah. a fur piece to town, huh? Does she always write in dialect? Do you think she means that she could use some gasoline? <laughs> well, it might be hard to mail it to her, Frank. Is that the end of the letter? Well, just the closing. Uh, there's no hint what she wants in the closing. All she says is, must close now as we're going around the corner to see a picture called Sables for Mabel at the Silver Fox Theater. Susie LeVere is in it. She's a cute little minx. <laughs> You're right, Frank. There's not a hint in the whole letter. Not a hint. Now, here's the P.S. Just got my old fur coat out of the closet and found the moths have eaten it. Wait a minute. Listen. Just got my old fur coat out of the closet and found the moths have eaten it. Janet, I've got it. That's the hint. I know what to send her. What? Moth balls. <laughs> She'll love you for every one of them, Frank. A nice box of moth balls is a gift with, uh, well, an air about it. Well, uh, look, uh, speaking about gifts, how about you sending a belated Christmas gift to the men overseas, Janet? One with an air about it. Of mothballs? Oh, send a new air. One like, uh, why don't you fall in love with me? Fairy gossip. Fairy gossip. Fairy gossip. Goodbye, God. Yes, goodbye. It was. There you are. Sit the rock. And get there before the prices change. Yes, sir. The next scene finds Cinderella all is in full swing. Bob oh, into the garden. The garden? What's going on there? There's a hockey game tonight. Oh, well, that'll be fun. Don't forget, Princess, the next dance is ours. All right, but it'll cost Our. a dime. Cost a dime. Cost a dime. Come in. Handsome man. I wonder who he can be. The curses. With that guy around, we won't stand a chance with the princess. Tell me, who are you, you great, big, handsome brute? I won't tell. <laughs> it's me, folks. You know, Cinderella. Well, why don't you tell me, big boy? I'm the princess. Don't bother with him. He's probably advertising something. Go away, Dennis, and you two down. I'm going to dance you down. I'm going to dance you down. I'm going to dance you down. I'm going to say you down. I'm going to say it with this. I mean, this is a cupcake. You know, brother, there's something familiar about his face. He looks not unlike that famous radio louse we know. <laughs> Princess, who, who are those? Who are those royal punks? Oh, just a couple of my suitors, but they're both clucks. Oh, clucks and suitors. I catch on. Well, my prince, shall we tackle a rumba? Well, to tell the truth, I'm I'm a little behind in my dancing. Well, that's all there is to a rumba. <laughs> then let's try it. Ah, oh, princess, you are wonderful. You dance just like Ginger Rogers. And you dance like Fred Astaire. Well, I know enough steps to be a stare. Gee, another stinker. <laughs> Kiss me, my darling. Kiss me, my fair one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy is here again. Who is he? I don't know. He's been nice to me. Yes. And it is nearly 12 o'clock. And remember, Prince Charming, you must be home by the stroke of 12. Oh, hallelujah, you're a bum. <laughs> Ah, my beloved, I must leave you now. I must be off. What's your hurry, cupcake? The princess, I must. The clock is striking twelve. What did I tell you? You wouldn't heed my warning. Look, look. Again, I am in tags and rattles. Uh... <laughs> again, I am in rags and tatters. I knew this dream couldn't last. <laughs> 
Throw the bum out. Look, it's our stepbrother, Cinder Allen. I knew his face was familiar. The Godfather. We should have had a rehearsal. <laughs> Godfather, what happened to my beautiful tuxedo? I'll show you what happened to it. Horatio! Horatio! Hello, stranger! Slapperman! Tell him what happened to his clothes. Well, Princey, here's the law down. I rent the Prince's suits for all cancer dentists in masquerade. You said it. Quiet. Mm. And Mr. Godfather told me I should rent you this suit until 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Positively. Quiet again, please. Mm. <laughs> well, it's 12 o'clock. Here I am. I got the suit and thank you. A lack of day. A lack of day. No double talk, please. And you, Princess, don't forget, please. I've won that dress back in the morning. Okay, you'll get it. Oh, look. Look, I still have my glass slippers. Those are sugar bowls. They go back to Lindy's. So do I. Music, please. It's time for our second visit to the Hotel New Yorker for a rendezvous with the King of Swing. This is Benny Goodman, Peggy Lee, and Benny's best-selling record of the moment, Why Don't You Do Right?
This week, like last week and all the days of our recent years, was filled here at home with talk about the future. To all these current, useful, hopeful discussions of the post-war world, over here plans to contribute each week the summarized thought of an eminent United Nations authority on the subject. Our first short message is from a great American thinker, in years and in his national reputation, the Dean of American Philosophers, John Dewey of Columbia University. Ronald Coleman in Hollywood was to have read Mr. Dewey's statement. Mr. Coleman is ill and has asked his friend Herbert Marshall to take his place tonight. Here is Herbert Marshall in Hollywood. There is nothing permanent except change, wrote Herodotus over 2,000 years ago. Today, it seems to me, looking back over my four score years of work and study, that too few men have recently paid attention to this great truth. Every day I hear people talking about the future in terms of after the last war. But this is another war. What comes after this war will not be what came after the last one. Men have changed. Living conditions have changed. Ideas have changed. Just as this is a new style war, so the peace will be, must be, new style also. Military triumph, followed by truce, is not enough. Peace alone will not settle things permanently. Peace offers only an opportunity for building a better world. We have been promised a people's world of security and opportunity after the war. But unless the peace is a people's peace... The promises may fail. More than at any previous time in the world's history, the future is up to the people. They must see that the victory is a true victory for the democratic nations. Of course, there will be no shortcuts to our goal. The widespread plenty, the higher standards of life for all, these will come slowly and painfully as they always have. But they will come surely. Inevitably, if we keep our vision clear and direct our energies into productive channels. The opportunities for us, the people of the United States, will be tremendous. A means for widely distributing the world's goods among all nations must be provided. A way of carrying health and education and a higher standard of life to the utmost corners of the earth must be assured. The mechanical means have already been produced by science and invention. Physically, the world is now one and interdependent. Only human beings, interested that men everywhere have a society of peace, of security, of opportunity, of growth of cooperation, can assure its being made morally one. A genuine democratic victory will be achieved only when it is made by democratic governments for the well-being of the common people of the earth. Signed, John Dewey. As you listen to the words of John Dewey, I hope seven of them burn their way into your mind. The future is up to the people. Now that's a challenge which we all must meet. This is a people's war. We must fight it, we must pay for it, win it, and finally share equally in the peace that follows. So there's one war job that each of us can and must take on. Buy bonds. Lend your country the money to buy the fighting tools to equip the men who are doing the actual fighting in every corner of the globe. The bonds you buy today will not only do that, but it will also give you and your family an option on the future. The peace that follows this war must not be a barren one. We must not let it be merely a peace that denotes the end of a war. It must be a beginning of a new security and a new prosperity. That part is your job. Ten percent of what you earn every payday in bonds and stamps. It will not only help win the war, but it will guarantee to each of us a share in the victory and peace that must follow. 
Remember, each of us has a war job. Let's get on with it. Ten percent of what you earn every payday in bonds and stamps. Over Here returns next week at the same hour. Again, we will have a star-spangled cast from New York and Hollywood. Listen at home next week at 7 o'clock Eastern wartime. Listen with your men in the service. This is James Wallington speaking. Over here originated in New York and Hollywood. This is the Blue Network. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.